it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today this is part 2 of how to take a good history. So let's get started. In the previous video we have talked about the big picture. First you take history, this is subjective, then the physical exam, also known as objective, and then you order some labs or radiology, and last is the treatment. Diagnosis and differential diagnosis is in the assessment. What are you going to order is the plan. And then remember the history tips. They were mentioned in the previous video. Remember to ask open-ended question and to elucidate what the patient means rather than what he or she says. After this, here are some physical exam tips. We divide physical exam into general exam and special exam. General, we have the overview, the vital signs, and the regional exam. Let's talk about the decubitus. What if the patient is lying down comfortably in bed? Oh, this is normal. Yes, it could be normal. You know what else? It could be platypnea. Platypnea is dyspnea when I sit up, but when I lay down, I'm comfortable. So it could be platypnea or it could be a normal person. What if the patient is semi-sitting? Hey, son, I need some many pillows under my head because I cannot lie flat. This could be left-sided heart failure or mediastinal mass or COPD or bronchiectasis because if I lay down like this man I'll have lots of pus. What if the patient is leaning forward? What is this? This could be pericardial effusion, pericarditis or severe orthopnea. What if the patient is lying on one side? Ask the patient. Oh what will happen if you lie on the other side? Doctor if I switch around to the other side I will get shorts of breath. This is Tripopnea, which is dyspnea on one side, but not on the other side. Tripopnea. How about if I go to the other side, doctor, I will cough pus. This is a lung abscess. Doctor, if I go to the other side, I'll have chest pain near the side of my chest. This is pleurisy. Doctor, if I go to the other side, I cannot even move. I can't. I can't do this. This is hemiplegia. Doctor, if I try to go to the other side, I will have lower extremity pain. This is sciatica. If the patient is squatting, this is tetralogy of flow. The patient squat to reverse the flow. What if the patient is prone on his belly? Could be pancreatitis, could be POTS disease, which happens in tuberculosis, or could be enteritis, inflammation of the bowel. What if the patient has restlessness? Oh, oh doctor, I'm not going to die. Could be acute myocardial infarction could be a renal colic, it's very severe pain, or could be acute dyspnea. What if the patient is lying on his back, but his belly is very tense and rigid? This is peritonitis. You get rebound tenderness, you get rigidity and guarding. The assessment has your diagnosis and your differential diagnosis. In order to write a complete diagnosis, try using all of these four elements, as discussed before. So we have S-O-A-P, P is the plan. Now to the fun part, let's know how to take history. As Hippocrates said, wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also love of humanity. Okay, the physician-patient encounter. Who is the most important person? The patient, not you, the patient. So you always look at the patient not at the doctor or at the perceptor. Always look at the patient. The most important goal is what you see here, what you hear here, what you leave here. Let it stay here. Patient privacy, that's why you need to knock on the door three times and you need to close your door after you go in. So what is the history? We divide the history into many different compartments. Number one, history of present illness. Hey sir, what brought you to the hospital today? Oh, doctor, you have a severe headache. That's the present illness. After you ask all you want about the headache, then we ask about past medical history. Have you ever been diagnosed with high blood pressure? Do you have high blood sugar? Do you have high cholesterol? Have you ever been hospitalized? Have you had any trauma or surgery? Are you allergic to any medication? Then we ask general questions about four things. Sleep, diet, exercise, travel. Then you go to the family history, ask the patient about any family history of a similar situation. Oh, oh, doctor, my, uh, my dad died from a heart attack. But if the patient said, no, no family history, uh, then you ask, how is the health of your parents? My dad died of prostate cancer and my mom died of breast cancer. This is important because cancers run in this family. Then you ask about the social history. 
This is like what you do for a living. Please do not ask the patient about the socioeconomic side. Do not say, hey, are you rich or poor? How much money do you have? Shut up. Then you ask about sexual history and then OBGYN history. So the history of present illness is the complaint and then past medical history, general history, family history, social and sexual, and then OBGYN. Let's go. History of present illness. What's going on right now? Past medical history is the previous occurrence. Has it ever happened before? Do you have any similar experience recently? Medical conditions. High blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol. Do not say hypertension to the patient. Say high blood pressure. Allergies. Do you have any food allergy? Are you allergic to anything? Do you have any allergies? Allergic to food, allergic to drugs, allergic to cats, dogs, etc. Are you taking any medications? Have you ever been hospitalized? Have you ever had any major surgery? Then general, sleep, diet, exercise, travel, family history, social history about occupation and substance use. Do you use and you smoke? Do you drink? Then sexual history, sexually active, married, single, etc. The OBGYN for females include how is your menstrual cycle? Do you take oral contraceptive pills? Have you ever been pregnant before? And what are the results of the pregnancy? Very important. Doctor, I've had six miscarriages before. Oh, this could be lupus. And then the vaginal bleed. Now, these questions are really important. Ask them to any patient with pain. Any pain. Okay, chest pain, headache, abdominal pain, etc. Onset, when did it start? Course, is it getting better or getting worse? Duration, for how long? Oh, for 30 minutes. This is way different from for three years. Distribution or radiation or propagation. For example, cardiac chest pain will radiate to the jaw, to the left shoulder, and to the left arm. Character, is it sharp? Is it dull? How about cardiac chest pain? It is dull pain. If the patient has an abscess, how does the abscess feel? Throbbing. If the patient had a knife stuck into his chest, this will be sharp. Severity. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you grade your pain, 10 being the worst? Oh, it's 10. Oh, wow. Aggravated by and relieved by. What makes it worse? What makes it better? Associations. What happens when you have your pain? Do you have sweating? What, what happens? Lab investigations. Have you went to the hospital? Did they do anything for you? And then medications. Have you tried oral, like sublingual nitroglycerin or something? If the patient doesn't know what nitroglycerin is, it's the pill under the tongue. So this is how I memorize it. Onset, course, and duration together. Duration has a D. Go with distribution. And then character and severity together. Next we have the prepositions. Aggravated by, relieved by, associated with, thank you. And then labs and medications together. Perfect. History of present illness or HPI. The complaint and the history of the complaint. What brought you to the hospital today? And the history of the complaint, which includes onset course duration, distribution, character and severity, aggravated by, relieved by, associated with, lab investigations with medications, and how is this affecting the quality of your life? Oh, doctor, life sucks. The pain is so bad. Next, past medical history, previous occurrence, medical conditions, you ask about three, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, allergies, are you taking any medications, have you ever been hospitalized, surgery or trauma, general, four things, sleep, diet, exercise and travel, recent travel, not 65 years ago, sleep, do you have trouble falling asleep, do you have trouble staying asleep, do you wake up early, all of these could be a problem. What if I was asking a patient about high blood pressure and the patient said, oh, yeah, I have high blood pressure. Should I just move on? No, you ask. When were you diagnosed? Are you taking any medications for your high blood pressure? What medications? Do you take them regularly? How high is your blood pressure? Family history. Ask two questions. Has anyone in your family had any similar symptoms before? And then you can ask, how's the health of your parents? Social history. We ask about the occupation and substance use, and you observe the patient's socioeconomic status. You do not ask about it. What if the patient looks very poor? Think rheumatic fever or tuberculosis. Sexual history. This varies tremendously from country to country, so be very careful. You can ask, are you sexually active? You can ask, are you married? You can ask about history of sexually transmitted infections. And then the OBGYN cycle, the pills. 
pregnant and vaginal bleeding. And then you summarize. Okay, Mr. Mustafa, you have told me about your chest pain. You said it is central. It is dull as if an elephant is sitting on your chest. It has been there for 30 minutes. It increases by moving and decreases by rest. It radiates to your jaw, left shoulder and left arm and it is 10 out of 10. Is this an accurate summary of your case? Yes, doctor. Is there anything else that you would like to tell me? Next, transitional questions. How do we go from history of present illness to the past medical history and how do we jump from the past medical history to the general? Okay. First, you ask three questions when you enter the room. So you knock, you enter, you close the door, you ask, you shake the patient's hand, introduce yourself, and then you ask, are you comfortable in this room? Oh, doctor, can you close the window, please? Sure. Would you give me some tissue, please, because I'm crying? Next, may I ask you a few questions, do a physical exam, and then give you my impressions? And then if you plan to sit down, is it okay if I sit down and write some notes? After the history of the present illness, now I will ask you about your past medical history. After you finish it, now I will ask you about your general health. Now I'll ask you about your family history. After the family history, in the end, you summarize and then you ask, is there anything else you want to tell me? And this is how you take history. Now, some tips and tricks. What if the patient looks depressed or mentioned that they have been divorced or a death of a loved one? This could be depression. So you do the SIG E caps, S, sleep. I, loss of interest, G, guilty, E, loss of energy, C, loss of concentration, A, appetite change, P, psychomotor, such as agitation, S, suicidal ideation. If the patient has five or more of these, depression is very likely. Next, how do you write the notes for the physical exam? Okay, you write them like this, and please do not say the word normal. Okay, how do you describe H, E, E, N, T? This is head, I, and then E, N, T, H. Normocephalic, atraumatic. This is the normal. E, E O M I, which means the extraocular muscles are intact. Perla for the eye. Pupils are equal. They are round, reactive to light, and accommodation. Normal fundus. N, nose, no congestion. T, throat, no tonsillar and erythema, exudate or enlargement. Mouth, moist mucous membrane, good dentition, no lesions. Neck, supple, no jugular venous distension, normal thyroid, and no cervical lymphadenopathy. Heart. Point of maximal impulse is not displaced. Rate and rhythm are within normal limits. We have normal S1, S2, no rubs, gallops, or murmurs. Lungs, vesicular breath sounds, clear to auscultation, no rolls, ronchi, wheezing, or rubs, no tenderness to palpation, and the TVF is within normal limit. TVF is the tactile vocal fremitus. These are the normal findings. Please memorize these, and you write the abnormal things first. Next, we have the abdomen. A normal abdomen is soft, non-tender, non-distended, positive bowel sounds, and no hepatosplenomegaly. Skin, no obvious lesions. Extremities, no clubbing, cyanosis or edema, no obvious lesions. Neuro, mental says the patient is alert and oriented to person, place, and time. Good concentration. Cranial nerves, 2 to 12, are grossly intact. Motor, the strength is 5 out of 5. This is excellent strength. DTRs are deep tendon reflexes, such as the knee jerk reflex. 2 plus, intact and symmetrical. The Babinski sign is negative. Sensory, intact to sharp sensation and dull sensation. Cerebellum, negative Romberg sign. Intact finger to nose test. Many mental status exam. The patient speaks slowly, for example. That's abnormal. Blunt affect. That's abnormal. Inattentive. That's abnormal. Three out of three. Registration. That's normal. Registration means... You point to a certain object and ask the patient, what is, the, what is this? This is a pencil. What is this? This is a paper. What is that? That's a chair. And then you do recall. You ask the patient to memorize, okay, pencil, paper, chair. Oh, pencil, paper, chair. I'll ask you about this in three minutes. If the patient remembers them, that's excellent. Recall. If the patient only recalls one, so it's one out of three. Then we did the orientation to person, place, and time. The patient is right-handed. Distant memories are impaired. Oh, this could be dementia. Differential diagnosis. You need to know the differential diagnosis of each one of these by heart. Let's, for example, do chest pain. You need to know myocardial infarction, pericarditis, aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism, tension pneumothorax, or esophageal rupture. Or you can divide them in another way. Cardiovascular pulmonary, gastrointestinal, musculoskeletal, and other. 
cardiovascular include myocardial infarction with the angina and the infarction and of course the angina could be stable or unstable the myocardial infarction could be STEMI or non-STEMI also you have your aortic dissection aortic stenosis pericarditis cardiomyopathy pulmonary embolism myocarditis mitral valve prolapse hocm etc the pulmonary stuff include pleuritis pneumonia pneumothorax bronchitis or a cancer gastrointestinal cause of chest pain include gastroesophageal reflux disease esophageal rupture esophageal spasm mallory wise tear musculoskeletal include cervical or thoracic disc disease costochondritis etc we just did it for chest pain you need to memorize the causes or the differential diagnosis of each one of these now the diagnoses you need to know each of this individual diagnosis by heart okay you need to know everything about angina everything about infarction it really helps if you know that angina is stable or unstable infarction is STEMI or non-STEMI strokes you need to know ischemic and hemorrhagic hypertension primary and secondary arrhythmia supraventricular and ventricular COPD asthma and chronic bronchitis you need to know pneumonia lung cancer anemia appendicitis colon cancer diarrhea food poisoning vaginal bleed GI bleed you need to know the asthma you need to hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism this is very important because hypothyroidism can lead to constipation and fatigue and depression hyperthyroidism can lead to higher blood pressure and palpitations and don't forget the diarrhea you need to know osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis lupus gout and scleroderma thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video